Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about something called a unit vector. Okay, unit vectors is the topic for today's lesson. Now, last uh, lesson we talked about components of vectors, right? Vector components. Now, one thing that I mentioned is that vector components are not actually vectors. The components themselves represent a magnitude of a vector that's projected onto an x, y, or z axis. Well, unit vectors are going to be how we now um, create vectors and take those components and make them into vectors. So here's the idea. A unit vector is a vector with uh, magnitude 1, okay? It has a length of 1, and it has no units. Okay, so what that means is it's basically just a pointer. What it does is it points in, in a direction. Uh, and it also wears a hat, okay? I'll tell you what I mean by this. So let's draw us uh, some X and Y axes. So let's say this is... Uh, our set of axes here. So this is X and this is Y, no surprise there. Now what I want to do is I want to draw unit vectors on here. So let's say that uh, this is a unit vector, okay? So what we're saying is this has a length of one, right? So right here is one, here's two, here's three, right? And we can do the same thing on the Y axis. This is one, this is two, this is three. And so we can also draw a unit vector on the y-axis, and that would look something like, like this, okay? So we've got two unit vectors. They point in a direction, and they have a length of one with no units. When we draw unit vectors that are parallel to the x-axis, we call them an i-hat vector, okay? So the i hat vector is along the x axis and the j hat vector is along the y axis. So this is how we do it. And so we'll say that the i hat vector points along the positive x axis and then the j hat vector points along the positive y axis, right? So this is a new kind of notation that we're going to be using. And although it seems kind of redundant, it actually winds up being very useful to separate magnitude and direction. And we put all the direction information into the unit vector, and then the magnitude is something else that you can multiply by this unit vector. Uh, now, if we're thinking three-dimensionally, which we should, then we can also look at the z-axis, okay? So let me draw the z-axis real fast, and let's say that'll look something like uh, this, right? So uh, let's say that that is the z-axis. In this case, we could also draw a unit vector on the z-axis. So here's one, here's two, here's three. Uh, so in this case, the unit vector would look something like this, right? So this would be the unit vector in the z-axis, and the z-axis unit vector we call k-hat, okay? So k-hat is going to point along the positive Z axis. So I, J, K, these are our three unit vectors for our three different axes in three dimensions. Now, let's see how this works. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, let me draw a set of axes here. We'll just focus on two dimensions for now, but uh, three dimensions is the same idea, right? If we have some random vector, just some general vector here that we'll call uh, a, let's say this is A, okay. Vector A right there. And this is our X axis, this is our Y axis, right? How can we talk about this vector A? Well, 
we can say that there is a projection of A onto the x-axis, right? We'll call this the component. So the component of A on the x-axis, so it's probably a little too long, looks something like this, right? And likewise, we can have a component on the y-axis, something like that. So we'll call this uh, A sub y, and we'll call this uh, A sub x. Okay, so this is what we learned in our previous uh, lesson about components. But these are not vectors. A sub x and A sub y are magnitudes. And so what we want to do to make them vectors is we're going to multiply them by the unit vector. So in this case, we're going to have two unit vectors, right? So this is i hat and this is j hat. They have magnitude one and a direction either parallel to the x-axis or the y-axis. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna say that the vector A is actually equal to the sum of two different vectors. And that is AX in the i-hat direction plus A sub y in the j-hat direction. And so this is now a vector, okay? This is a vector. So last time when we were talking about this, we were talking about how, you know, the vector A uh, is sort of like AX plus AY, but if these aren't vectors, then you can't really do this operation. So now we're making them into vectors because we multiply them by unit vectors, right? So now this is a vector because it has both magnitude, and it has direction thanks to the unit vector, okay? And if we wanted to think three-dimensionally, you could also add in A sub Z times K hat. And so this would make it three dimensions. And this is the notation that we will be using with vectors from now on, okay? So whenever we talk about vectors in the future and we're having these components, we will be using I hat, J hat, and K hat notation or the unit vectors in order to properly describe them, okay? So in this case, this vector is a sum of these component vectors. We've made them into vectors now. Okay, let's look at how we can actually add vectors together using these component vectors with the unit vector pointers. All right, so now we are going to be adding vectors again but this time we're using component vectors. And this is the right way to be doing it. Okay, so let's uh, start with an example. Let's say we have some resultant vector r, and we're saying that this is equal to the sum of vector a plus vector b, okay? So what we can do is we can rewrite vector A and vector B using component vectors. So in this case, vector A is going to be A sub X in the I hat direction plus A sub Y in the J hat direction plus A sub Z in the K hat direction. And then we're adding B sub X in the I hat direction and B sub Y in the J hat direction and B sub Z in the K hat direction. So now we've sort of expanded this out. Instead of two vectors being added together, we have six vectors. Seems more complicated, but it actually winds up being useful. All right, so let's rewrite this in a different way. We can say that R, the vector R, is equal to the sum of Rx in the I hat direction plus ry in the j hat direction plus rz in the k hat direction. So this is, these are the component vectors of the resultant vector r. And this is equal to all of this, right? But let's rearrange this a little bit because here we see this is an i hat and this is also an i hat. So we can kind of simplify a little. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to simplify this as ax plus bx in the i hat direction and then we're going to look at 
a y plus b y in the j hat direction and then finally a z plus b z in the k hat direction so we've kind of simplified six vectors into three vectors right with these with these magnitudes over here and so that simplifies things as well and you can just see intuitively now that you know r x in the i hat direction is going to be equal to a x plus b x in the i hat direction so that's what this allows us to do this is just writing it out formally in the full expansion okay let's see if we can try an example now of adding vectors using these component vectors and see how that works all right so let me draw a set of axes first and uh let's try something like this something like this okay so what we have here is uh, our x-axis our y-axis and our z-axis okay beautiful now we're going to be adding two vectors together we've got vector uh, a and that is going to equal uh, three i hat plus three j hat plus two k hat okay so that's vector a and we're also going to have vector b and that is going to be equal to two i hat minus one j hat plus one k hat okay so these are our two vectors and we're going to add them together two three-dimensional vectors and we're going to graphically show it and show how that matches with the addition of the vector components right okay so let's do this all right so let me draw the component vectors for vector a okay so we're going to have three i one two three like this right and we're also going to have three j something like this and two k so that'll be something like this so here we have the component vectors for uh, vector A. And so that, if we want to look at this, let's try and draw the resultant from this. something like this okay so this is going to be our vector a just like this in three-dimensional space great okay now let's add on the component vectors for b and show how that gives us a resultant so we're going to have adding on 2i right here. And then we're going to add on a minus j. So that's going to bring us down to here. And then a plus k, something like this. So these are the three component vectors of b. And let's see where this winds, us, uh, winds up. About there. about there about there okay so let's look at where this gets us and we're going to go in a chain from a to this final position here so this is going to be our vector b and so for our resultant vector that's going to be going from the very beginning to the very end like this. Now this is going to be our resultant vector, 
R, okay? So R is going to be essentially the sum of all of these component vectors. So we can imagine that this sum here is going to be R sub Z in the K hat direction, and that this here is going to be the sum of the two i hat uh, vectors for a and b so this is r sub y in the j hat direction and then this vector here is going to add up to be r sub x in the i hat direction and so this graphically shows exactly how you can add these two vectors together and if we wanted to do it mathematically we could say that this is going to be equal to we're going to follow this equation right up here, right? So this is going to be equal to 3 plus 2 in the i hat direction plus 3 minus 1 in the j hat direction plus 2 plus 1 in the k hat direction. And that's going to equal 5 in the i hat direction plus 2 in the j hat direction plus 3 in the k hat direction. And if we look, we should be correct. So 5 in the i hat for our x, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That checks out. The should be 2 in the j hat direction, 1, 2. That checks out. And 3 in the k hat direction, 1, 2, 3. That checks out. And so this resultant vector r works out graphically and mathematically using these kinds of component vectors, right? Using unit vector notation. So that's what we've got for today. It's basically building on our previous lesson of components and making them into real vectors using this unit vector notation that's gonna be very useful in how we describe all of our uh, vectors in the future. If you have any questions, leave me a question in the comments below. And we've got some exercises here. You can find a link to a PDF on my website with some exercises. You can practice those, and then we'll go over them in the next class. If you thought that this helped you, uh, give me a like, give me a sub. It really helps me out a lot, and I'll look forward to seeing you in our next lesson. All right, bye-bye.